Good morning, everybody. I'm Helen Edwards, and I'm the current chair of Oxford Urban Wildlife Group. And this morning, I'm delighted um, to be able to describe to you how, as a local community group, we have developed species surveys over the last year at Boundary Brook Nature Reserve in East Oxford. Just a year ago, I attended the last TVERC conference and I was really inspired by all the presentations and I went away feeling really energised to ensure that our group continue to develop and share our good practice for urban wildlife interest and that we link with experience and knowledge locally and nationally. At that stage last year, we just requested our TVERC historical records and that was part of our monitoring um, proposals for essential habitat work to be funded by a successful application to Trust for Oxfordshire Environment. That was following a few years in which the group had been a little unstable, there'd been a lot of change, activity on the site had dwindled, surveying and public access um, had dropped away. Um, but by last year, the group had really worked together and regenerated. We'd strengthened as a group, our work on site was moving forward, habitats were beginning to thrive, and our monitoring and public engagement work was growing. And we were recognising the unique aspects of our group and the site. So now it's really timely that a year on since requesting the records, we can share the developments since. And indeed, the reserve has been a vital resource for the local community during COVID lockdowns and in helping with the human need for vital connection with wildlife and wild spaces. I'll just give a very brief recent history of Boundary Brook Nature Reserve for those that don't know of it. The site is approximately three acres and it's in East Oxford. The land was previously disused allotment land, um, which was at the time predominantly grassland, um, fruit trees with some vegetable patches that were overgrown remaining. Some of the fruit trees we incorporated into the wild bird orchards, which are part of the mosaic of habitats on site. And just one or two of the compost heaps and sheds um, can still be seen adorned with daffodils or used as wildlife refuges, particularly by nesting birds. Um, Oxford Urban Wildlife Group was founded in 1988 when a group of urban wildlife enthusiasts came together. And then in 1990, um, the City Council leased Boundary Brook Nature Reserve to Oxford Urban Wildlife Group for the benefit of wildlife. And now, just um, 30 years later, We've just renewed the lease for the next 10 years with the City Council. Here is a map showing you where the reserve is located in East Oxford, OX4, 4AN. It's delineated by Boundary Brook Estate and Larkrise Primary School, which lie just off the Ifley Road, and by Howard Street, and on the other side, a cycle track running next to St Gregory the Great School. And on the last side, the East Oxford Ward allotment land, the reserve was once a part of, of Cricket Road. The land is on what was the Cowley Marsh and was a small part of an extensive marshland on the northwestern side of Headington. Geologically, the site is clay loam on top of Oxford clay and under that lies a layer of London clay. The soil is of neutral pH with a tendency to become very wet and sticky in a normal winter and bake into hard lumps in long dry spells. The site is near Boundary Brook and drains into the River Thames. There is runoff water onto the site due to large amount of tarmac on the surrounding land and a culvert taking water from the road drains overflows at times of high rainfall. This water all means that the land is wetter in winter than it might be. And indeed, last winter, the amount of ground lying water was the highest for 30 years, with some areas impassable to humans, including some of the cycle track. Wild plants that do well are those that can cope with these conditions, with the common and marsh plants able to thrive in the wetter areas, the marsh and the centre of our hay meadow, and plants that tolerate neutral soils in the remainder of the site. The site is on level ground. 
Here's the brief essence of our site management aims. You can see more detail of our vision for wildlife, operational work, group governance and public engagement in our 50 page Boundary Brook five year management plan, which is just being uploaded onto our website this week. There's a rich diversity of wildlife habitats within the three acre site. The mosaic is roughly composed of three basic habitats expected on marshlands such as this. One third rough grassland, characteristic of the early days of the site, cut on rotation every one to three years, with emphasis on increasing meadow flower biodiversity. One third coppice woodland and scrub, including hawthorn, blackthorn and bramble, and we balance the use of hazel and ash poles from the coppice with the creation of wildlife habitat. And a third is mature woodland with focus on enhancing biodiversity of woodland ground flora. Boundary Brook also has freshwater habitats, three ponds and a marsh and two reed bed scrapes. There are the buffer zones, which are three metres, lying between the nature reserve and the neighbouring allotments, as well as the grass and gravel paths on site being maintained and improved to ensure that they are fully accessible in all weathers. There's also a forest school area, which is used daily by the local primary school. And there's a wildlife garden, a demonstration wildlife garden planted to inspire visitors so that they might plant their gardens with wildlife in mind. Conservation work on site is undertaken by volunteers on our regularly regular Thursday morning and weekend work parties with on site training for particular tasks such as hedge laying or scything and others. So, as previously mentioned, the successful funding bid to TOEI, Trust for Oxfordshire Environment, is supporting our ponds, glades and woodland project this year to increase much needed grassland habitat and to create new areas and improve biodiversity. Also to enrich woodland and to increase ground flora diversity and plant some new trees to protect against ash dieback. We also aim to improve freshwater marginal habitats, reprofiling the kidney pond and adding pond dipping steps to our large pond and clearing some of the encroaching sedges. We're also increasing site safety and security. So we particularly wanted to develop our surveys to find out which species are still here from our TVERC historical records, record any new species arriving on site, and for those species surveys not previously included in our records, to establish a baseline from which future changes might be referenced. So we're coming back to the aims of our group just at this point, because it was so important for us to keep these in mind, as these aspects of our constitution need to underlie how we approach our species surveys. So our aims as a group are the conservation and management for the benefit of the public at large, of the wildlife interest and amenity of urban wildlife areas in the area served. Secondly, the creation, maintenance and or management of nature reserves and other sites of biological, scientific, educational and amenity importance. And thirdly, the education of the public and in particular young people in the principles and practice of urban nature conservation. So it was important for us to ensure that we were reaching and involving the public in our approach, ensuring the Nature Reserve is offering opportunities to local groups, individuals and also enriching education and public access to urban nature conservation. We're always keen to balance human presence with wildlife interest, so our recording protocols needed to be in keeping with ensuring wildlife interest was kept at their heart. We hope to bring in county expertise to cross over with local community involvement and make new dialogues possible. To this end, we approached a, a range of groups and local expertise, as well as including features about surveying and keeping environmental records in our own 
internal newsletters to Oxford Urban Wildlife Group so that we could ensure that we were tapping into the expertise and enthusiasm already within our group. You can see here um, the range of different individuals and groups that became involved in our species surveying at Boundary Brook, um, ranging from local members to um, ecology groups and university students and schools, um, a huge range of, of different people that became involved. To help us be able to see um, the pattern of species surveying and the, um, the seasonal influences and the life cycles of the different species, um, it was really helpful to have a very visual representation of the activities that we began to undertake at Boundary Brook. And there were particular um, species surveys that we had a lot of information um, for from the past in terms of the historical TVERT records. Um, so we were hoping that they would be a, a starting point to be able to establish which species remain on site, um, new species arriving, any notable absence of species, and to have a reference point for future surveys. So I've just chosen four species surveys to illustrate here today a range of aspects that were involved in our approach to survey developing and our preliminary findings in this wildlife reserve. So I'm going to just concentrate on plants, bats, dragonflies and butterflies, just for the sake of this talk today. Beginning with the plant surveys at Boundary Brook Nature Reserve, the historical records showed around 290 vascular plant species recorded since 2004, a range of garden and wild species. Because the site had been predominantly grassland in the early days, there'd been a lot of interest in the plant surveys and there'd been um, a huge floral diversity and various indicator species of rich grassland. Um, there'd been extensive butterfly surveys and bird surveys also associated with these areas. And um, another part of our focus for the plant surveys was to follow our aim for Boundary Brook Nature Reserve to be a place where common, rare and extinct in the wild species of Oxfordshire can be seen and enjoyed. So these help shape our focus for the plant surveys. So we began by plotting out some sessions and visits. From April to September, the plant surveyor, who was Camilla Lambrick from the Ashmolean Natural History Society, came and visited the site roughly fortnightly and um, recorded some species, prepared for the public engagement sessions and also introduced a, a range of, of plant species to the site. So there were three um, get to know your flower sessions that Camilla ran to enable local people to become engaged with plant ID on site at Boundary Brook. And you can see here a photograph of somebody examining a flower structure with a times 30 lens in one of those sessions and being able to see a huge amount of detail of tiny insects and of the small yellow pollen grains. We looked at a range of different plant families, such as the Asteraceae and others. So this year we recorded 94 species, which brought the total of species up from 290 plant species to 313. And we need to continue further work to determine if others remain present that we didn't record in our species surveys um, this year. Focus wasn't on going round and recording numbers of, of plants and different species. Focus was very much on enabling local community to become engaged with identifying plants on site and to ensure that our aims for Boundary Brook Nature Reserve to be a place where common, rare and extinct in the wild species of Oxfordshire can be seen and enjoyed. Um, and to start to establish a baseline for future plant surveying. Some notable new species that were recorded this year were a white helleborine, Cephalanthera damasonium, and the pyramid pyramidal orchid. 
Anacanthus pyramidalis, which we found in the woodland. We also introduced plants to Boundary Brook, and amongst these were common plants such as mouse ear, hawkweed, dogs, mercury, and Good Friday grass. Um, some county rare plants such as frogbit and lily of the valley and also we were focusing on enhancing wildflower populations so we introduced sorrel honeysuckle betony daisy cat's ear and self-heal we were also interested in building local reserves of nationally rare plants um, and we're part of the freshwater habitats saving wetland plants project and we introduced creeping marshwort and greater water parsnip. Also some plants extinct in Oxfordshire were introduced, water germander, penny royal and um, greater sausage. And we are building a bed of demonstration grasses, sweet vernal grass and wood melic. So the outcomes of Boundary Book Nature Reserve plant species surveying were that um, we now have a, a beautiful set of painted labels on wooden discs and tiles on the site which were made as part of, of our Art in Nature sessions and they provide an Art in Nature trail on the site. You can see some pictures here. We have some accounts of seasonal plant species found at Boundary Brook Nature Reserve and their importance for medicine and appearance in folklore and poetry. And we've shared um, our information from the surveys, the accounts of plants and the art with members, with groups on site, with the local school, with social media and on our website. So for the bat surveys at Boundary Brook Nature Reserve, our focus was on building a, a new baseline because we had no previous records of bats on site. So we began with two bat walks. Each was a two hour transect walking with listening points. The first in April and the second in September. These were to take place um, when the temperature was 10 degrees or above at sunset with little or no rain and with no high winds. And this was the walk that we decided to go on and you can see the listening points highlighted by the yellow bats in the picture. The results of the species surveys were very different. So in May, with very low counts, we had um, registrations on the bat detectors that we took round with us. So we had six between the group and um, the results are based on the surveyor's bat detector. So there were two common pipistrels recorded, a soprano pipistrel and two registrations of nocturals. So a total of five. And we had five volunteers who um, were interested in coming to the bat walk and helping. In August, the profile was very different. So activity was much higher and there were 126 registrations for common pipistrels. 36 for soprano pipistrels, one nocturnal, um, 21 for an unidentified big bat. So a total of 184 and it was incredibly popular. We had 12 people on site um, who were interested in coming. And so the results of the bat survey in terms of the um, activity centres, you can see the red lines show areas of high activity, which are very much on the edge of woodland. And the low activity is, the, um, is recorded in yellow, and those are the areas that are in more open areas, um, a scrubland away from the woods but also not by the ponds and the areas of low activity um, were very much in the grassland areas where there was little or no activity that night. The outcomes of our bat surveys this year were that we have a much clearer seasonal profile now of bat presence at Boundary Brook and some comprehensive data that we can 
um, use as a baseline to be able to be a reference point um, for future surveying activities. This was just our first year to establish that baseline. We've put some bat boxes up at Boundary Brook Nature Reserve. We didn't survey these this year, but it might be that these could be included in our bat survey activities for next year. The sessions were really popular, just as the plant ID sessions were on site. And we had volunteers who are keen to organise some bat walks themselves. So we may have more in-house surveying activities for the bats next year. As a group, we've invested in some bat detectors so that we have much more equipment on site to be able to run bat surveys ourselves. And also, um, we, we have a range of sonograms now and of detailed information, giving us a much clearer picture of bat activity on site and the sort of possible habitat improvements that we we might consider to support bat presence on site at Boundary Brook and of course with the other surveys um, a lot of the information can be used to look into our proposals for habitat improvements for the future to improve diversity and presence of a range of species. Moving on to the dragonfly surveys at Boundary Brook, again we had few previous records of species on site, so our aim for the season for our surveying activities was were to establish a baseline for assessing future change. We surveyed three areas, the wildlife garden pond, a kidney shaped pond at Boundary Brook and our large pond and we set four survey dates for the surveys to be um, undertaken by Stephen Birch, the county dragonfly recorder. The dragonfly survey results showed the presence of seven different damselflies and dragonflies on site, and you can see the results here. Amongst our outcomes from the dragonfly surveying were of particular note that the emerald damselfly was present. This is generally quite localised in the county. We recognised the garden pond's compact nature was ideal for dragonfly flight photography and this has become a very popular location for people to photograph dragonflies in flight. We identified seven species this year and we might expect more like 20 to 30 with more time and also work on improving the freshwater marginal habitats on site. The low numbers could also um, be due to the few number of visits and that the visits didn't necessarily coincide with the best conditions for dragonfly presence. For the butterfly surveys, we had more results, more past records um, of butterfly surveying on site. And so we um, developed the butterfly surveys um, according to the way that members had previously been recording butterflies on site. And these were weekly walks. Um, two people volunteered to record. And the sort of numbers they saw each time that they were out on site were between about two and five. Um, they felt the butterfly numbers were quite low on site, possibly due to the wet weather, um, apart from the speckled wood, where there seemed to be an abundance of, of speckled wood, especially in the first brood. So you can see here the butterfly profile on site over the um, months between April and September. I wanted to include some, some photographs um, as well from our surveying on site because it's such a beautiful site and it inspires many people to go and draw and paint and take photographs and sit and enjoy the peace of um, this oasis of wildlife in an urban area. So there's a orange tip um, caterpillar and a speckled wood butterfly and here we have a slow worm um, in the grass. So the outcomes of our species surveys on site were that we had um, much more comprehensive data for some species surveys. The plants, bats, dragonflies, butterflies, birds, small mammals, slow worms and wetland plants. And we were able to have some walks on site um, where people attending the nature reserve as part of the public open afternoon, um, which we included in the Oxford Open Doors weekend, 
um, and they were able to enjoy having um, walks on site to see the birds of Boundary Brook, to see butterflies, slow worms and wetland plants and they were really popular and well attended. It's also meant that visiting groups have been able to enjoy guided walks on site when um, surveyors have been happy to come in and share um, their approaches and to share their findings and sightings. So groups such as the Second Oxford Scouts, forest school groups, um, staff team away days from local firms and organisations and also EMBS College um, where overseas students have been able to come and enjoy nature as part of learning English. It's also been possible to um, include events on site um, which have had focus on different species and I've already mentioned the Art in Nature event um, which is very much linked up to the plant surveying. And we've included newsletter articles and features on our website to let people know about our species surveying activities. And we're putting together some um, leaflets and information and activity sheets based on our findings. And at our AGM, we had some very, very um, good discussions and thoughts about how we move forward to upload results with TVERC and work with um, TVERC and also to encourage our members to use iRecord and to think about how we as a group coordinate the sightings um, that come both from our surveying activities but also from members visits on site and how we share these um, on social media and also encourage people to use social media to upload their sightings um, to us. So for the future um, there are a few strands of, of thoughts that we have about what um, the future might involve for Boundary Brook Nature Reserve species um, surveys. We hope to build on species surveying activities this year um, and to clarify species new and remaining on site species from TVET records. We really hope to begin surveys that we weren't able to initiate this year, such as insects, bees, moths, freshwater invertebrates. We are going to be ensuring that um, the species surveys outcomes inform our habitat maintenance and to in continue to increase biodiversity on site. We'll carry on linking up with the city's green corridor to ensure that we can be of benefit to both resident and visiting species on site. Um, we'll be monitoring um, seasonal and other changes that, that happen um, around Boundary Brook, changes in urbanisation, um, climate, um, footfall on site, whatever those changes might be. And we're, we're very committed to enabling members of the local community to become further involved in surveys and gain new skills next year. And um, next year's programme will involve lots of family sessions um, to share species um, ID skills. So thank you very much um, for inviting me to, to share the way that we've developed our species surveys at Boundary Brook Nature Reserve. I hope you've um, enjoyed this presentation and if you'd like to visit us on site um, or if you'd like to get more involved in species surveying or even if you have an idea for a very particular project um, that our site might be um, a really good location for them, please do um, get in touch with us. You can either go to our website www.ouwg.org.uk or email us at info at ouwg.org.uk and um, also you can join as a member on the website and that will mean that you have access to um, regular newsletters, regular updates from us about opportunities on site and also information about how to access the Nature Reserve. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.